Hello everyone, Rem News and our guest today is Diane Rogers. Diane, she is the President and CEO of uh, Rancho Cordova Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Diane. My pleasure, thank you for having me. And uh, we all know that Rancho Cordova is in the purple tier, right? And uh, could you provide available sources for local businesses who are thriving right now during the pandemic? Well, I appreciate it, and thanks for the question. Um, I do want to make sure everybody understands that it's the entire county that is in, under purple, and the chamber has the privilege of serving a couple of other areas besides the city, Gold River, Mather, Rosemont, uh, Ranch Murrieta as well. So um, everybody's been impacted, and the city's it, businesses in the city and in the county, just it, it's been extraordinary. And I think it's mostly our customer-facing businesses restaurants, uh, breweries, people, you know, where they have customers coming in the door that are mm -hmm. being the most significantly impact. So one of the things we've done is put together this care package. Oh. And the idea is simply to let the businesses know that we're out there, we're trying to help them. And this is some simple things um, like some sanitizer and mask up buttons and bags to put masks in and things. But probably most important is the, is the paperwork that we've provided that has all kinds of resources for our businesses and our employees and um, maps and information about free testing sites. Oh, that's really helpful, I think. Yes. And uh, do you know maybe numbers about how many businesses were affected and how they're trying right now to come back to their life? Well, probably not coming back. Um, we still, we are trying to keep track of the number of businesses that are either closed or have closed permanently. And unfortunately, it's mostly our restaurants and, and hospitality businesses mm -hmm. that have been significantly impacted. I can share with you, for example, um, stays in the hotels are below 50%, and usually they're up around 80%, and particularly in, in Rancho. Rancho's done very well in that market. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But also with no employees coming to the businesses, they're not stopping on their way out and going to restaurants and having lunch or dinner, and that's part of a big problem as well. Of course. Yeah. And uh, one, I think, is the most uh, popular question from our local business entrepreneurs. It's about what programs are available right now uh, to help those businesses, you know, to thrive and to, uh, to work after the pandemic. Great. Well, the one I'm really excited about is a micro-grant program. Mm -hmm. We've received some funds, um, around $70,000, to be able to offer micro-grants to our local businesses. And we have $50,000 to award inside the city limits of Rancho Cordova and another $20,000 to award outside. And wow. the grants are up to $1,000. And I know it's not going to have a huge impact, but maybe it can do something like buy a laptop so someone can work at home or a training course to be able to you know keep up on your skills things like that and there is a deadline mm -hmm. so and that's the end of next week so we do want to make sure people go online um, check on our website which is ranchocordova.org and it will say micro grants and to please check that and, and, and get that information those micro grants are available only for Rancho Cordova residents Businesses, there's 50,000 inside the city limits for businesses mm -hmm. and an additional $20,000 for Mather, Rosemont, Gold River area. Excellent. So it depends on where the money's come from. We have to do that. Yes, yeah. sure. And uh, do do person need some other qualifications or it just, um, it just need to apply the grant? And the Good question. They need to be uh, 50 employees or smaller. Okay. They need to have a legal business license. Mm -hmm. um, they need to... Um, it sort of give us an idea of what the money is going to be spent for okay um, and it's pretty simple you know it's pretty much that so, and the the list of qualifications and what they need to do is is online and part of the, um, the uh, application process but I do urge people to do it as soon the businesses to do it as soon as possible because at the end of this week is be when we're closing so the, the deadline is uh, the fourth I believe it is December 4th yeah. okay so the deadline is December, December 4th. 4th yeah uh, and uh, what are the best uh, resources, uh, maybe for, for those who, are, who want to find about existing lending or financing programs? Well, um, my recommendation, and, and this is part of what the Chamber does and, mm -hmm. and our primary role, is to be that facilitator to connect people mm -hmm. to the resources we have. So, for example, um, we have lots of banks that are involved who have great information mm -hmm. and can guide you in the right direction, and you know, they're the where the most... Uh, the programs that are uh, right and available today. Um, additionally, we have um, attorneys that people can talk to. Mm -hmm. And then our website has all kinds of resources 
federal resources, state resources, county and local resources yeah. to be able to make sure that people get the information they need. Because it's so important to remember, and I, I really want your viewers to understand this, is the requirements for businesses diff varies from business to business. So the requirement for a restaurant is different than for manufacturing or a nail salon is different from you know, a movie theater. So to go on and find out how it impacts your type of business, your industry, and get that information, make sure it's current. Of course, yes. And what resources are available for employees? Well, they're much the same um, on our website as well. Mm -hmm. And part of this packet that we're delivering, and we will email this and share this with anyone who wants. It doesn't have to be part of the bag, but we have lots of these resources. But employees need to know what their rights are, mm -hmm. what resources are available to them, testing sites. Again, there's a testing site right here in Rancho Cordova, it's a free one. And there's a lot of free ones around the county as well, because people may not live in the same place that they work. Yeah. So they need to go on and you know find out um, from develop employee development department or um, Cal OSHA or things like that, find out what needs. And the employees are so critical because they're the ones that have to implement. They're the ones that have to have people stay the six feet apart, wear the masks, um, have the plexiglass. Mm -hmm. the employees have to do that. Um, and if I could say one more thing, I, I really want people to understand business wants to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. They want to have this pandemic over. Their employees are not just their employees. I spoke to a gentleman who has a restaurant in town and he said, I have employees who've worked for me for 25 years. Wow. And I know their children. I know when their child graduates from high school. I know when they get their first car. These are my family and I don't want to do anything that jeopardizes them. So, yeah. you know, I hope that people understand it's not just business trying to make money. This is business trying to stay alive because nothing happens until somebody sells something. Sure, so. yes. And um, I think that uh, those resources that you mentioned, mm -hmm. is it possible, uh, for example, to upload them from your website? Yes. So how it works. So yes. if the businesses is, are in another area, they can upload those as right. well. And we're not focused just on chamber business. This is impacting everyone. Okay. It doesn't make any difference whether they're a chamber member or not, because this is a, a rising tide raises all shifts. Everyone who's successful helps everyone else to be successful. And so we want to make sure that we get this information out to as many people as possible. Yes, maybe my last question will be about your message to the Slavic community, to the Slavic businesses. So what would, would you like to, I don't know, to share with them? So maybe advise them? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you for having your businesses in our region. Um, it's been my privilege and pleasure to work with a lot of the Slavic businesses and they are a huge integral part of what we do. Mm -hmm. And they make up a large part of our business community. We have information in Russian. We have resources that are available to people in Russian. On the website? So, um, it, it's uh, downloads. No, yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, we want to make sure people get that out. But we're all in this together. This is this disease. This pandemic is affecting everybody, not just a ethnicity or men or women or one size of business or another size. It's affecting everyone, and we have to work together and collaborate and cooperate with each other to make to to overcome this. Thank you, Diane. My thank pleasure. you for your time and thank you for your warm and kind message. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Pleasure.